Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a product update. So this is a video where I go through the products that maybe I might have talked about in passing or I let you know that I would be giving you an update. And a lot of times it's products that I haven't done dedicated reviews on. Sometimes I'll put it in if my thoughts have changed, but I don't think I've done a dedicated review on anything here. These are all things that I've kind of been trying on the side, off camera. You might have seen these products listed in my description box or from a haul. I think you get the point. Anyways, let's get into it. So the first product I have to try on is from e.l.f. I think I might have put this on in like a trying new makeup video. This is the e.l.f. Electric Mood X Tiana Major 9 Primer. I'm not really a big fan of this personally. The dropper seems to be really low quality. I find myself having to go in like 10 times before I can actually get the product out. And this really doesn't have any benefits to the skin. It does leave like a metallic, semi-glittery finish to the skin, which honestly I find to be unflattering. I feel like it emphasizes this texture can ugh, I just don't really like it if you put a foundation over top it looks fine but I just don't like the way that this looks on my skin so if you're looking for something hydrating with a glow and you don't want to put anything on top this is not what I would go to so I don't really recommend this personally the next primer that I have is from Revlon this is the photo ready rose glow face gloss I have to say this is probably my favorite primer that I've tried from Revlon of late it does have a rosy glow to it the only flaw I think it has is it's not as glow glowy as I want it to be. It's more of like a micro fine glitter glow that it gives you instead of just like a true sheen glow. But they're so micro fine that it doesn't bother me quite as much because I feel like with the e.l.f. it did leave a little bit more chunky glittery glow on the skin which was unflattering. These are so micro fine that it's not that big of a deal. But I really like this because I feel like it is hydrating. It's nothing too hydrating and normally I like something super hydrating but comparing it to the e.l.f. this one definitely gives more moisture and I've tried a few Revlon primers of late and this has been my favorite one that I've tried so I do actually like this. So I've been testing four foundations. I mean I've been testing a lot more recently but these are like the ones that I tried a few weeks ago. So the first is from MAC. Talk about a classic. This is the Studio Fix Fluid Foundation and oh my gosh I love it. I am like 10 years too late to the game but I did receive this in a partnership that I was working with MAC for and oh my gosh this is such a beautiful beautiful foundation. I have mine in the shade NC27 which is a wee bit too dark for me as you can see but since we're wearing a turtleneck it's not that big of a deal but this is like my summer shade. I'm more NC25 I would say but anyways beautiful beautiful foundation. It gives like a nice medium coverage. It can be built up a little bit. The finish is a little bit more matte. This doesn't give you too much glow. It's not like a true drying matte but it's more like a natural matte finish and I just feel like it makes my skin look so smooth. I don't know if you can see but I am wearing it right now. I feel like it blurs the pores and really perfects the skin while not looking too heavy on the skin. This has been one of my favorite new discoveries in foundation. I'm so late. I need to buy a pump for this but it's it's the business it's really really good the next foundation that I've been testing is the oxygenetics oxygenating foundation I think this is definitely a solid foundation this one reminds me actually of the max studio fix I feel like this one is a little bit more drying but not in an unflattering way but this lasts just a little bit longer because I feel like it doesn't have as much moisture in it if you prep your skin well you'll be fine this one also I feel like gives the skin that natural matte coverage. It wears really well and what's special about this is how lightweight it feels on the skin. It's not an amazing foundation. I haven't been super wowed by it but I've definitely been enjoying it. This is not my shade right now either. It is a bit too dark for me but I've been enjoying the formula. I can see why a lot of people really really like it and it's not as wildly known. The next product that I have is from Bare Minerals. These are the liquid mineral foundation. I have a couple of shades that I was testing. Ugh, their shade range is so off. This is neutral ivory and this is light beige and these are super duper dark on me and I feel like these oxidize like crazy. I have a hard time really judging this foundation because the shades are so orange on me and I, I mean they sent me these colors so I guess I could go lighter but something called neutral ivory should not be too dark on me. I have like a light medium skin tone. Anyways, 
Color aside, oxidation aside, I'm not in love with these. This is definitely a light coverage foundation. It feels very lightweight on the skin. It's just okay. I haven't been wowed by these in any sort of dimension, like wear time, finish. It's there. It makes my skin look a little bit better. I do like how lightweight it feels, but other than that, I haven't been wowed by this. I feel like it almost separates on my skin as well when I apply it, so... These are personally a pass for me. I'll stick to the powder products from Bare Minerals. Ooh, okay, so this one is probably my favorite foundation in this group that I've been playing around with, which is the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. This is absolutely beautiful on the skin. It has a nice, healthy, natural finish with a nice, natural glow. For some reason, I thought this was gonna be really thick and cakey, but that wasn't the case. It really is like a serum foundation that has a decent amount of coverage. The only flaw to this is it really does not wear the longest which is something that I do find with a lot of clean makeup brands so I'm not gonna go to this foundation when I know I have a full day ahead of me but if I want my skin to look nice and healthy for a few hours I do enjoy reaching for this kind of like for that everyday foundation this has been beautiful I do recommend it just remember probably not the best for long-term situations but ooh, this is absolutely beautiful. It's looking at what I have for foundations. It's the glowiest. It gives about a medium coverage. It looks the most healthy on the skin is what I would say. Definitely much more skin-like than the others. I've actually been asked a numerous amount of times about my thoughts on the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Eye Primer. Personally, I'm not a fan of this. I don't really notice it doing anything. So you're actually able to use this as both the under eye concealer primer and an eye primer. I don't like it as a concealer primer. I don't feel like it does anything. I don't feel like it hydrates other than separating the foundation that might have gone under my eyes. So when I spread my foundation out, then I put this on. It almost separates the foundation and I don't like that. And then as an eye primer as well, I don't really notice it doing anything. But do keep in mind, I have more dry skin. My eyelids don't get oily so I, I don't really struggle with the longevity of eyeshadows. But I haven't noticed anything really exceptional about this. To me, it's just another step and it doesn't really do too much move on to concealers. So the first one that I have is from Bare Minerals. This is the Liquid Mineral Concealer. This is a shade light to N. Again, I find that their range really is quite dark. Light to N and you can see how orange it looks on my under eyes. I think that this is a solid, solid concealer. It's a little bit blurring, which I enjoy. It gives about a medium coverage. I don't really have anything bad to say about this concealer. I don't think it does anything amazing where I'm like, wow, oh my gosh, you need this concealer. That's not the case, but it's a solid concealer. I like it a lot more than I like the mineral foundation. I've been using this. It feels lightweight. It's good for every day. I wish I had it in a slightly lighter color, but it's not bad. I've also been really testing the Catrice True Skin high coverage concealers. I do find these to be a bit drying, but I do like them. I actually use the lighter shade on the inner corner of my eye today to lighten up the Bare Minerals. When I use this on its own, I do think that my under eyes look dry. I can see some of my under eye wrinkles a little bit more than I normally would, but it does give like a medium to full coverage. And I almost feel like when you mix this with a more hydrating concealer, then it is amazing. The Bare Minerals is definitely more hydrating than the Catrice. So mixing the Bare Minerals and the Catrice together has made my under eyes look really blurred and soft and pretty. So <laughs> random, but these two are quite a good combo. So these are a solid okay. I do like the coverage and I do like the finish, but you definitely need to prep the under eyes. If you have a lot of fine lines on your under eyes, more mature eyes, this is not the concealer for you, but other than that, it's a decent concealer. I've been enjoying it. The last concealer that I've been testing is from Milk Makeup. This is the Sunshine Under Eye Tint and Brighten, and this is definitely a concealer that does not have a lot of coverage. So if you have very dark under eyes, you have to do a lot of color correction, this is not going to be for you. I'm very lucky in that my under eye discoloration isn't too bad, or I just don't mind it. I mean, I have some darkness, but nothing really to be alarmed about. When I wear lighter products like skin tints and tinted moisturizers and a light layer of powder foundation, this is the concealer that I go to. This is perfect. It doesn't look too full coverage on the under eye with those really light coverage skin tints, which I know are very popular. So expect a light coverage from this, but it does just very easily brighten. I don't suggest 
setting too much with this because then I feel like the under eyes look a little bit dry when you set this but it really is nice to just throw on out the door when you're wearing no makeup makeup so I do like it I don't really love the packaging though it's the push packaging and then you have the ball I feel like I get an uneven amount of product I have to like push two times and then nothing comes out then I push another time and then a bunch of product way more than I need explodes out so I don't really love the packaging itself I, I think it might malfunctions on me all the time but the product that is inside is pretty good it's not going to be for everybody but I do like the way that it performs setting powder I've been playing around with an OG the bare minerals original mineral veil I have two colors I have translucent and then I also have sheer light where this one is just a wee bit deeper I actually really like this powder I mean I know that it is so old I'm using it today I think my skin looks really blurred and pretty just be careful with the foundations that you wear underneath if it's a drying foundation and you put this on top this powder really does cling onto the dry patches but if your skin is prepped and you're wearing a reliable foundation then this is really great to set with I've been enjoying this today I actually used a damp sponge and I put a lot more powder than I normally do I normally don't do this but I feel like my skin looks extra blurred and pretty so I'm very happy with the outcome of this powder personally I prefer sheer light I think translucent sometimes when you build it up too much you can kind of see that white cast sheer light is perfect for me in that you can't see that white cast Ooh, we got lots of creams in this one so I have this elf quad right here this is the electric mood and excuse me I, I don't know this artist but P-I-T-I-Z-O-N. I don't want to mispronounce that. This is the De La Soul Cream Face Quad. I love this. This is such an underrated product in my opinion. I think more people should have been talking about this when it launched. The packaging is super fun, but e.l.f. can do creams pretty well, I must say. And these are such trendy products. I used the cream contour today to give me a contour. It looks a little scary and dark on my skin at first, but it blends out so easily. You don't even need to swipe. If you just pat, it will blend into the skin seamlessly. Even the highlight, which I don't normally like, this gives kind of like a nice wet look to the skin it doesn't remove the foundation underneath I was very impressed with how this performed and the blushes are very pretty as well I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this but I have to say if you're looking to try out cream products you're not looking to break the bank this might be great this is great for travel it's not going to break because it's a cream product great for those warm vacations to just pat this on the skin and go really quickly I really like this it's underrated I don't know I've been enjoying it I also have this cream trio from from Milani that I've been playing with. I've enjoyed the powder version of this. I prefer the powder over the cream. I've talked about the powder a lot more, which is why it's not in today's video, but this is the Cheek Kiss Cream Blush Palette in Sun Kiss Glow. I like this a lot. I do think if I'm to be picky about the formulation, sometimes it can be a bit greasy, but not terribly so to where I don't want to reach for it. Now, I'm not going to use this color because this one has way too much pigmentation, but I've been playing around with these two and I think they are beautiful. They are not the most long-lasting cream, but again, for an affordable price, I've been enjoying this. I particularly like this color right here. I have this one on my cheek and it has kind of faded away a little bit, but again, it still looks really cute. So this is a solid, good product. I like it. And then I also got to play with, I have a few other colors to try, but this is also for Milani. This is a supercharged cheek and lip multi-stick. I really, really like these. Now on the cheek, they're a bit more sheer. So if you have a lighter complexion, I think you will like this. This does not disrupt foundation at all. I will just rub some of it on my cheek and it blends in really easily. It adds a nice pretty wash to the skin. Again, another great product for that no makeup makeup. The cream trio has more pigmentation. That's how I would differentiate these two. I put this down. It left a pretty glow, but I wanted more of a pop to my cheek because I'm a blush freak. So I did take one of these colors and put it more so on the apples so that more color was showing but if you like a lighter blush I think you will enjoy this I really do like this product I just prefer something with a little bit more pigmentation all right and that is it for complexion let's move on to my eyes you can see we have some glitter reflection going on how pretty and these were trendy on TikTok a while ago I did end up picking a couple of them up and trying them on the side these are the Kat Bundy dazzle sticks I mean these definitely had an 
effect on TikTok because you can see how pretty they are, but I'm not gonna lie, up close I'm not as much of a fan of these. I find them to be a little bit messy and too thick to apply straight to the eyelid from the stick itself. You can see right here, it's getting really flaky and messy. If you are going to use this, I do recommend using a finger because you get too thick of a layer if you apply it straight from the stick. Now, they have sat down on my eyelid because I put a thin layer with my finger and they don't really crease when I use a lighter layer like that. But just be careful. I think application is a little bit tricky with this because they can look chunky on the eyes and I don't believe these are going to be the most flattering on mature eyes. These are cute enough to keep, but I definitely don't want to buy more colors just because they aren't super easy to use and they aren't the most flattering. I don't know if you can see, but they definitely look a little chunky on my eyelid. It's pretty from afar. You can see the glow, but I don't think they were worth the hype. I'm wearing the shades, by the way, Lightning Strike and Electric. And I have the lighter one in my inner eye, and then in the center of my lid, I have the darker one. And it's pretty. You guys know I love glitter, but it's not the best glitter product that you can get. Another product that I also tried is the e.l.f. No Budge Shadow Stick. I saw these all the time on their website, so I finally decided to give this a try, see how they would compare to the Laura Mercier. These are not very long wearing, if I'm being honest. They were super pretty. I'm saying they, but I only have one shade, bronze metal. This was super pretty just to throw on in the morning. I love the way it looked. It applied really easily, but this definitely did crease on my eyes. And like I said, longevity isn't something that I normally struggle with. So the fact that this did leave some creases means it's not really that good of a product. This is like a grocery run kind of thing. If you're just running out of the house, you want to look a little bit more presentable or like a Zoom meeting, you can pop this on. It's super easy. It's not going to really hold up for more than like three hours. So it's really pretty. I liked it, but longevity on this just wasn't there. Can we talk about this Revlon? What is this? Colorstay Sharp Line Eyeliner. I have two, thank goodness, because I really love this. This is such a black eyeliner. It has a really long applicator, which makes it very easy to create a swoop. I've been enjoying this liner from the drugstore so far. It hasn't dried out on me yet, and it's one of the most black liquid liners that I've tried from the drugstore, so I've been enjoying this thoroughly. I have this chunky layer of this cream glitter product on my eyelid. It's just swooped over that. No problems, no skipping, no sheerness with it, so these are awesome. The other eyeliner that I tried that's in liquid form is the Essence Eyeliner Pen. I thought I liked this, but then I compared it directly against the Revlon, and the Revlon is so much better. So this was fine. I think it lasts pretty good, but it does not go well over any type of liquid products over the eyelid. I have it on this eye, and you can see the glitter's trying to pop through. It's just not as black. It looked a little bit gray compared to the Revlon, so this is not as good. I suggest you go for the Revlon more because the Revlon is better. Another really good liquid liner that I tried, which is a little bit more expensive, Expensive than the other two. They are in a drugstore. This is the Beauty Pie Deluxe Precision Liquid Eyeliner. And this again reminds me actually a lot of the Revlon. It's a little bit harder to get a hold of. The Revlon's a little bit easier because Beauty Pie is a UK based brand. But this is a really nice black liquid liner as well. It lasts a really long time. I haven't had any troubles with this either. But I would say the Revlon is pretty much a dupe for the Beauty Pie. But the Beauty Pie is beautiful as well. Revlon's just a little bit more accessible and affordable. So I've been testing the REM Beauty Mascara. I had all of their other products. I was almost gonna put them in this video, but I did really well-rounded review of the entire product line, and I just thought my feelings on that review were still the same, which is why I just decided not to put them in this video. But I did wanna update you on this because I was still fairly new to the mascara in my review, but I really, really like this. It doesn't really do well in the volume department, but it gave me nice length and separation. So I've been enjoying this as as an everyday mascara. I don't find that it gets clumpy. I think this is a solid, solid mascara that you can pick up. I'm not super impressed with the Rare Beauty line, but I liked this from first go, but I wanted to confirm that I would still like it the longer I used it because I just think with mascaras, you need to use them longer and it's held up really well. It's keeping the integrity of the quality. So really nice if you want like a lengthening and separating mascara. Just be warned, it does not give you volume. These are the only two Rare Beauty products that I'm updating you on are the lashes that I picked up and I just thought they looked 
so beautiful on the website. These are the Dream Lashes. I know they look all flubbed up <laughs> in my demo for you because I've used them a few times. I'm just not a big fan of these lashes. I don't think they really do my eye shape too much favors. For me, I like an eyelash with a little bit more of a curl so that you can see the lashes. These I feel kind of go a little bit straight. They look too thin to me. Just at this price point, I would suggest you look into Ardell lashes. I think Ardell does a better job than these REM ones. I'm going to continue using them because they're just quick everyday lashes that they're on. They have a nice thin band, but there's nothing really special about these. I, I wasn't expecting really dramatic lashes. I'm okay with lashes that aren't dramatic. I'm just saying at this price point, I would go for Ardell, which is much more accessible, and I think Ardell has some styles that are prettier and more flattering than these. Oh my guys, I forgot this. This is for the face. This is the Milani Replenishing Facial Mist in Blueberry. I love this. I don't even know that it does anything. It's just a facial mist, but it smells like blueberries. So if you don't like fragrance, don't use this. But I love fragrance and really artificial, sweet smelling stuff. So this is awesome. It refreshes my makeup if I'm looking dry, which I am a lot this winter. Mm, it smells like blueberries. So if you're like me, I think you will like this a lot. I find it to be quite hydrating to the skin. All right, guys, we're in to the final section lips I don't have too much I have one straight lip liner lipstick and lip gloss and they are all drugstore which if you haven't noticed my update videos have a lot of drugstore products in them because I'm not a drugstore channel I don't feature too much affordable makeup but I'm always trying affordable makeup on the side so that I can really tell you what's worth it from the drugstore and what's worth it from luxury because I'm going on a rant now but how can I tell you what's really worth it from luxury if I don't know if you can't get a better version of it at a board affordable price. But anyways, this lip liner is awesome. This is from Revlon. This is the Colorstay Longwear Lip Liner in the shade Nude. What a stunning nude pencil. It is really creamy and easy to apply. I think this is a catch from the drugstore. It's more for those of you who do like that creamier lip liner. I prefer something more waxy, so I personally prefer the NYX lip liners, but I know there's some of you that like that more hydrating, easy, creamy lip liner, and if that's you, you will really like this. I looked at Revlon's lip color line for these, and the line itself offers some really great colors, so I do enjoy this. I don't like that it's an automatic pencil, so you have to use this little sharpener. I like physically sharpening to get it nice and sharp, because I feel like you can never get it super sharp sharp. But other than that, solid, solid lip liner from the drugstore. Now this, freaking amazing. The colors are amazing. Milani, and these were big on TikTok as well, and these are worth the hype. These are the lipsticks. I don't even know what they are. The, the, the Milani lipsticks. This is the shade Secret. I can't wait to play with the other colors that I have. Super creamy, super comfortable, even pigmentation on the lips really works like a high quality lipstick. They are made in Italy, which I think is really, really interesting because I think Italy just makes some superb products and specific formulas and lips are one of the categories that they do good in. I don't know. I just really, really love this. I love the colors that they offer. So these are worth the hype in case you were wondering. They're fantastic lipsticks. They're not drying. Can I stop talking about these? They're great if you didn't catch that. <laughs> okay, it is time for the final product, which is lip gloss. This is also a product from Milan. This is the Keep It Full Max Plumping Lip Lacquer, so please do keep in mind that this is a lip plumper, and if you don't like plumping lip products, you're not going to like this because this is quite intense. I like the formula of these, though. They have a decent amount of pigmentation. They're not full coverage, but they're not a sheer lip gloss. They actually give you color. If you pop a lip liner on and you put this over top, this will cover your lips. I love the colors that they have, and they smell amazing, mm -hmm. and they are not really sticky at all. Like, see? Not too sticky. They give a decent shine. They make whatever lip you're wearing comfortable if you like the feeling of a lip plumper. These are a bit of a more intense lip plumper. I don't find it to be too intense. It's definitely tolerable for me, but I do enjoy the feeling of lip plumpers. So if you can't handle the heat, don't get this. And it also smells like candy. I don't know. I personally really like this, but I know this is not going to be for everybody, so just be warned. But the formulation, pigmentation level, everything else, fantastic. Really enjoy that lip gloss as well. 
overall, Milani killed it with those lip products. All right, guys, there we have it. Those are my product updates. I actually will have another video very soon because this video got pushed back. This bin of specific products has been waiting to be filmed with, but I already have another one started for next time, so that should be up in a few weeks. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Let me know if you want me to continue to do these updates videos. Do you find them helpful? Yeah, if you guys aren't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do that. I would truly appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next one. You guys have a good one.